We gotta stock our freezer for less. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I have got another freezer recipe video for you guys. These are just tips and tricks on how to stock your freezer and keep your freezer stocked for less. We all know inflation, it's crazy. And a lot of times you already have a lot of these ingredients at home or it would be cheaper buying it and making it in bulk and for putting it in the freezer yourself versus buying it already frozen in the frozen section at your grocery store. So I've got a few tips and tricks for you guys in today's video. And then at the end, I'm also gonna be sharing how I divide up and package my hamburger meat to save room in your freezer. So let's get to cooking and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. We are gonna start out with this waffle mix. I am prepping these for my best friend. Her kiddos love waffles. And she said, you've gotta do these for me, but my kiddos want chocolate chips in them. <laughs> so she picked this stuff up for me. I'm gonna tell you the price. So at great value, you can get the pancake waffle mix for $1.53. And then you can get a bag of chocolate chips for $1.28. So between the two of these, that makes it $2.81. Now you can get a box of um, great value waffles, um, the frozen kind in the freezer section, you can get eight waffles for a dollar. So we already know we're gonna get more than that. So this is definitely way cheaper. Like I said in the last one, and I'll have the last um, stock it up for less video in the description box for you guys. You have to, you know, think of the ways that you can manage your money, especially right now with inflation and making it homemade, taking the time, making bulk batching it and putting it in your freezer. It's gonna be way cheaper doing it this way than buying it already put together. So let's get these all mixed together and let's see how many we get. Okay, so the waffle mix on the back of the box says that it also calls for oil. And it also calls for eggs. So oil is something that I keep on hand, and, you know, anyways. So for me, it's not a huge difference in adding cost. And then um, we, have been getting our eggs for free. My sister-in-law um, has been giving us eggs when she has extras. But I'm saying if you, you know, you're, you're gonna need add in the cost for the three eggs if you make these yourself in the oil. But it's still not gonna be a huge difference. And honestly, it's still gonna be cheaper than if you, you know, bought the box of eight. So I only have one of these, like the mini waffles. So we're gonna just do this all day long. <laughs> but I've got my batter mixed up. Now I left it plain because I wanna make sure that every waffle has chocolate chips in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some batter on it and I'm gonna put the chocolate chips on myself. So like I said, that way I know every single waffle has chocolate chips in it. Okay, so we got 38 chocolate chip waffles for roughly like $3.44. I kind of added in the price for the eggs. Um, of course, the prices are gonna depend on your area, but this is what they are around here. 
So for $3.44 for that many waffles, that is such a good deal because you can get, like I said, in the frozen section, you can get eight waffles for a dollar. So this is a way better deal um, doing them this way. And then I'll just package them up and once they completely cool and I'll come back and show y'all how I do that. Now that they're all cooled, we're gonna package them up. I'm just gonna take and put them into freezer bags. I just put eight per bag, just like you would get in a box. Now I'm gonna use these patty papers. I like to keep these on hand for this reason, because I normally don't have enough room in my freezer to flash freeze them. You could easily put them all in like one layer and flash freeze them and then just stack them up once they're frozen. Um, but I do like to use these patty papers for that reason. Like I said, it's way easier just to get it done and not have to worry about taking the time to flash freeze. So I'm just gonna get them all put up. And here they are. I took them over to my friend's house and she put them in her freezer. Have you guys ever made cookie dough? and just put it in the freezer and had balls of cookie dough ready to go <laughs> whenever you need them. That's what we're gonna do today. This is another great way to stock your freezer and it's gonna be a lot cheaper making them homemade. So for me, I had all of this on hand. I always keep chocolate chips stocked, um, baking supplies, butter, eggs, all that. So for me, this is technically extra, you know? So I'm filling my freezer extra with some cookies. Um, so I always follow the recipe on the back of the package. So for these, we are using the Hershey Special Dark Chocolate Chips. I got these um, for a dollar, I think they were like a dollar 25 a bag um, at my mighty dollar. They had a bunch of them. Um, they had like all different kinds. I don't know how they got them, but they had a bunch um, for $1.25 and I just put them all in the freezer. So I pulled these out. So we're just gonna follow the directions and ingredients on the back of the package. That's what I always do. It says that these make five dozen. So we're gonna have a bunch. I did clear out a shelf in the freezer so that way we can flash freeze these. Flash them, um, flash freezing them is just keeping them on a tray put them in there for a couple hours till they harden up and then you can put them in baggies and they won't like stick together. Um, and like I said, this is the perfect way to have cookie dough ready to go. If you have company coming over or if you're, you know, a smaller family and just want like two or three cookies at a time, then you can just pull out what cookie dough, you know, however many cookie doughs you want, bake them in the oven and you're good to go. So let's get all this mixed together. I'm gonna measure everything out and make us some cookies or cookie dough. Before I get started, I wanted to mention that the recipe calls for one cup of chopped nuts. My family, well Luke, is not a huge fan of nuts and cookies. So instead, I'm gonna do a cup of these, they're actually Christmas, <laughs> uh, mini M&Ms. I just had these in my pantry, they need to be used up. Somehow I managed to have two bags open. Who knows how that happened? Probably little fingers, y'all probably know who that is. So I'm gonna use those instead of the chopped nuts, but this is a, just a great way to use up some ingredients that you don't need.
So I'm just gonna put them in the freezer for a few hours to set up. And that's all the room I have in the freezers for that one tray. Um, I'm trying, I'm gonna go ahead and bake some just because, you know, how can you not? <laughs> um, but it, so it'll just take you, you know, depending on how much room you have in your freezer, will depend on how long it takes for you to, free, you know, flash freeze them. But it normally takes just an hour or two. You just want them to set up at least on the outside. That way they won't stick together when you just put them all in a Ziploc baggie. I have got the washer and dryer going, so it is what that is. <laughs> but here's what they look like. It has been an hour. They are nice and set up. So I'm just gonna take and put them in this baggie. I've got what kind of cookies they are. And then like in case somebody else wants to grab one out, 350 for eight to 10 minutes. So that way they know what it needs to be cooked on. So we're just gonna put them in here and then do it all over again. Till I'll get down to the dough that I'm just gonna bake. Luke came home in the middle of me doing these and he said, so you're gonna bake some of those, right? <laughs> I was like, yes, I'll bake some after dinner. So it's cool. I ain't turning my oven on. The dryer's bad enough, but we gotta have clothes. So I'm just gonna put all these in here and they'll be ready to go. And then, like I said, since you flash froze them, you can just pull one, two, however many out at a time that you need, and you've got cookies ready to go. If you have company coming over, pull some out for them. Bake you some fresh cookies before your company comes, and you'll be the best hostess ever. So that's two dozen right here. So we're just gonna do it again until we get them all done. I'm gonna put those in the freezer though. I'm not gonna let them sit there. <laughs> So now I have two bags of cookies ready to go. Such a good way. Stock your freezer, stock stuff that your family likes. And it's super easy just to put them together, flash freeze them, and then you can just pull out however many you need and when you need them. I found some ground beef on sale over the weekend, so I picked up 12 pounds. This is such a good way to stock your freezer for less because if you find it on sale or even if you find a meat on clearance, buy it if you can afford it and put it in your freezer. So I got this for $2.49 a pound, so I went ahead and got 12 pounds, so let me show you how I put it up. This is going to be a huge space saver for your freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep and get all my bags ready to go so that way once I start cutting, I can just fill it. It just helps save time and less cross-contamination on the outside of the bags. Um, of course, I've got Lysol wipes close by and I clean everything as I go. So I'm gonna take and just divide each. Th these are three pound logs. So I'm gonna take and divide it into three. That way they're a pound a piece eyeballing it though because I don't weigh it and then I'm just going to put each pound in a baggie do that until um, you know I use all of the meat and then we will clean up and flatten them out Now I'm going to take each bag and kind of close it just a little bit, taking a little bit of the air out. And then I'm going to take and flatten it out as flat as I can get it. This is going to help you be able to stack your hamburger meat and it not take up near as much space if you had just leave it as is. Like if you just seal it up like you see behind, 
then it's going to take up a lot of space in your freezer. So if you flatten it out either with your hands or with a rolling pin, this is going to help save a ton of space. And this is also going to help with freezer burn, which we go through ground me really fast. So I normally don't have issues with freezer burn. But if you do, this is going to help do that as long as you get as much or all of the air out that you can. And of course, just label and date your meat. If you do that, I don't worry about it for ground beef because we go through it so quick. But this is gonna take up way less space doing your ground beef like this. It's gonna give you a lot of more room in your freezer. And that's it guys, that wraps up today's video. I really hope these freezer tips and tricks helped. We gotta do what we can right now with inflation and stock our freezer for less. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.